Hey guys, welcome to the Faithful Farmer Mama. Today I thought I would share something with you. If you are new to my channel, this video may not be anything different. However, if you've been with my channel for a while, you would know that me sitting here just talking to you is not how I do my videos. I wanted to share with y'all today how our family got started on a homeschool journey about seven years ago. Before we get started today though, I am gonna ask you, if you are new to my channel, please go down below, find the subscribe button, click that along with the little bell. It will alert you to when I have new videos coming up. You can find me on Instagram under the Faithful Farmer Mama. You can also find my apron shop, The Apron Lady, on Etsy and also here on Instagram. I'll leave both of those links for you down below in the description box. So I wanted to share a little bit today about our homeschooling journey. I've had quite a few people ask me, what made you decide to homeschool? Especially since your kids were in the public school system before. So I thought I would share a little bit of backstory about us. My husband and I are both public school children. We went through the entire system, graduated, um, and did very well in the public school system. And I was content with the public school system for the most part until my son was about seven or eight, nine-ish. Um, and he, he had difficulty in school. He was not that cookie cutter kid who liked to sit behind a desk and just kind of do what everybody else was doing. He wasn't the normal, just go and do what you're supposed to do and be done kind of kid. And that's what I loved about him. And as a mother, I actually beat myself up that I didn't take advantage of that part of him and didn't understand that part of him until he was older. And that I'm gonna to explain to you right now. So to back up a little bit, I had a child when I was 21 from a previous relationship and I did the best I could as a single mom with this wonderful boy that I have, who now is almost 28. Oh my goodness, can't believe he's almost 28. But I did the best job I could as a single mom and I was an active duty soldier stationed in Germany. And while we were there, Jackson was actually diagnosed as having ADHD. It wasn't that big of a deal. I knew he was a little on the hyper side. Um, I didn't like the label that they had put on him, but as a single mom, I was young. I, at that time, I was about 26. Um, I had no clue, no clue about homeschooling. And I did the best that I could or what I thought I could do at the time. My son went through the public school system all the way through ninth grade. Unfortunately, ninth grade three times because the public school system failed him. He was a special kid a kid who could memorize and visualize things without physically having to do it on paper. So my child could take a state test, state test, pass it as 100 across the board. They're like, he is genius. Yet he didn't turn in his homework and he didn't do schoolwork um, in class because he said that it was boring. And he used to tell me not nice things about his teachers. I won't even go into that part of it. So. After his third try trying to get through the ninth grade, he said, mom, this isn't worth it. I'm in a different state and in this state at my age, I'm allowed to pull myself out. So I'm pulling myself out. He did not make it through the high, public high school. When he was 19, he went to go get his GED, GED from the local community college and graduated second in his class. Uh, the kid is smart, did wonderful. That should have been my way of knowing that God was trying to tell me I should have homeschooled him. Fast forward 11 and a half years, Jackson was 11 and a half years old. I had my first daughter, my middle daughter, who is now almost 16. And um, a quick, right under two years later, came my second daughter um, with my husband who um, 
is now almost 14. About seven years ago, we were in the public school system. I'd say between five and seven years ago, um, we were in the public school system and everything was wonderful. And I absolutely loved our school, our PTO. I was a big part of that. And I enjoyed my friends that I had there and we worked hard and it was a, a great experience for the most part. But I felt that my girls were one of my girls anyway, was super smart and I felt like she really needed to be pushed a little harder. Um, that started my mind thinking about what I needed to do to help her. So when my two girls were about two and newborn, we moved to New York State and I met this amazing woman who probably is watching this and I won't name her by name, but she has become the most amazing family member to me that I have ever had. She homeschools her children, which now there are nine of them. At the time there was only three and then a newborn, um, so four, and um, she homeschools them. And she was my introduction to homeschool. I did not think at the time when we were there, I was like, there's no way that I could do and deal with the regulations from the state. Uh, they were very, to me, they were very tedious and very difficult and there was just so much involvement. And if I wanted to homeschool, I didn't want anybody telling me what I had to do and how much I had to do. I know what my kids need. I know what they got to do to get into college. So I was at that point. We moved away about three years later from me meeting this girl and I have kept in touch with her for 13, almost 14 years now. And um, she still homeschools in a different state and I still homeschool in a different state. And when we were starting homeschooling, we started in North Carolina and then we moved to Oklahoma. So I've had to deal with the regulations of many different states along the way, which I will talk a little bit about that in a little while, not in depth, I will just point you in some good directions to find information on that. Fast forward to where my children are in third, no, fourth grade and second grade. Halfway through the school year, it's about December-ish, beginning of December, end of November, and I go in, because I was an active parent in the school, I go in and I'm sitting in my daughter's class, or even looking from the outside, I can't remember because I had done both, and I'm sitting there watching and she's sitting there with a book, just probably about 15 minutes I watched her. She just sat there and read and the kids in the class were jumping around and loud and screaming and she's just... So I asked her that day, sweetheart, how often is your class like that? She said, like what mama? I said, like crazy and wild. And she said, oh, my class is like that every day. Don't you know, we have that class and I said, that class? And she said, yeah, that class. All those kids are in there. And that started me to think, okay, my kid is not being challenged. I'm going to go talk to the principal about it, what I can do to get her on the right path. So I went into the principal and actually asked her. Um, I was watching the teachers that were coming up for her and one of them I was not content with. And I asked the principal, you know, this is what's going on and I want to make sure my child's getting her education. Um, and I really would prefer her not in five months move up into this one particular class. Uh, how do I make that happen? And she told me outright, there is no way that I can promise you your kid is not going to be in that class. And I just kind of looked at her funny and I said, well, I can't promise you that my child's going to be here next year. And she kind of chuckled at me. And then she said, oh, you're just kidding. You won't pull them out. Okay. I went home and prayed really hard. And within a week, my husband and I decided we were going to um, pull them from the public school. I can't believe that we just kind of went out on a whim, but you know, God kind of led us there. And it really took something massive, like being told that there was no way they can guarantee my child not be in a class that I was un unhappy about. And I felt that it was a way to pull us back together as a family, the way we should be, the way it should have been with my son. 
So we did start homeschooling January 18th. It was our first day. I was nervous as could be and thought I would never be a good homeschool mom. And needless to say, seven years later, here we are. I have a sophomore in high school and I have a, an eighth grader. She's kind of on the cusp of ninth grade. She does a little bit of both, which is one of the blessings of homeschooling. Um, and it has never been better for our family. Now my son did get his GD, took a couple college courses, said, mom, this is not for me. I'm gonna just go find jobs. He's been working on and off jobs, construction and uh, restaurant stuff. And you know, he does still struggle and I beat myself up for that a lot, but I know God is working on him as well. With my girls, on the other hand, I have to say homeschooling them being able to add God into my homeschool curriculum, being able to study things that I never remember studying in, in school, like ever. And I, I mean, I haven't, I didn't graduate all that too long ago, but things that I just do not remember studying in school. And I'm grateful that I'm able to learn it with them and then they get to learn it and we are kind of bonding together as a family. Um, like I said, it's been almost seven years. We're a couple months, what, two months shy of seven years. Our school year actually starts in January and we finish in December, November. Um, sometimes we'll finish up in September and move up to the next level. And uh, that's just one of the many blessings of homeschooling. Uh, you get to work with your kids and see where their strengths are and where their weaknesses are. And you get to teach them according to their level. So if one is struggling with one thing, you can kind of slow down and work on that one thing. And then, you know, or if they're accelerating in an area, you can actually go and push that area. You also can find their likes and dislikes. So of course, I have a child who loves to read. She loves science and math. Well, not math so much, but she loves science. Of course, I'm going to push her in her field that she really loves and enjoys, whereas the other one does not care to read as much. She does read, but she cares not to read as much. She's more histor history and um, historical facts and, and going into the historical side of our country. Um, and I love that part of her. And so I'm not gonna push science curriculum extra heavy like I am on the other one. So one of the things I will say to you, if you've ever thought about homeschooling, don't let the regulations scare you. Don't let that keep you from homeschooling your children. It is a calling. Not everybody can homeschool. Um, although personally inside of me, I do feel that everyone can homeschool because I was that mom. I remember being in our uh, town in Texas when I first put my girls in school and I remember the last day of school would come and the teachers are all standing there at the door like yay it's the last day of school and me I'm like oh my god it's the last day of school oh my kids are going to be home for months I was that mom and then we started homeschooling and now they they say I helicopter just enough because I want them around all the time. I can't imagine life without them here all the time. It would be so weird. So don't think just because you think you can't homeschool means that you can't. One of the best ways you can find out about homeschool regulations is the HSLDA, which is the Homeschool Legal Defense Administration. I think it's an association. Um, they can actually, you can actually go in there and search their homepage for regulations for a specific state. Uh, if you're in Ohio or New York or Pennsylvania or Texas or Oklahoma, for that matter. Um, as you know, we are in central Oklahoma. Oklahoma's constitution, the state constitution, actually in Article 14, I believe it is, states that parents have the right to decide what is best for their children's education. And um, that's one of the reasons we're actually in this state. We love that we are able to homeschool and homeschool at our pace and our um, dis with our discretion of what we learn and what's being put into our children's minds. Whereas if you are in a public school setting, you are going to get what the government is trying to teach your children. And that is just how it is. That's why their teachers are taught 
they have to do training and then that goes into their kids. But anyway, so the best way to find those regulations really are with the HSLDA. You can go and find their information there. I will put that down in the description box for you to link and go check them out and look up the regs in your state. It may be easier to homeschool in your state than you really think it is. So if you are contemplating homeschooling, there are a few people that I know. Um, if you go online to Instagram, I am not a Facebook user, but I do have an Instagram account. You can go on Instagram and look up homeschool and you will find tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of information. There is one gal that I do follow myself and I'm a homeschool mom. Um, she is on YouTube, uh, Little by Little Homeschool. Uh, she has coaching that she can help you get started if you feel like it's something that you're really even just considering, even if you're like, my kids are gonna stay in a public school, but I wonder what it would be like. Go check her out. Uh, she is a great source of information. There's another one, um, of course, because I wanted to tell you about it. I cannot think of the name of it. Homestead Homeschool, I think is what it's called. She's really great too. I'll link a few of those below. Um, in it, It'll say Instagram and it'll have their names under there for you so that you can see it and check them out. If you guys have any questions about us and what we do as a homeschool family, I would love to share it. We love our life as a homeschool family. It is very different than a public school family. Um, and I think that's one of the things we love best about homeschooling is that we are really able to pick our own schedules, decide what curriculum is best for our kids and really become involved with their lives instead of just being that shuttle runner to and from, putting our kid in, a, in an area with a teacher who's got too many kids and is teaching this agenda curriculum that is picked by someone way outside of where they are usually um, and teaching something so if one child doesn't get it, your other kids are kind of like, okay, what do we do while you're teaching to this child? Uh, that's one of the things I think I love most about homeschooling our girls. So thanks for being here today, today, guys. And I look forward to our next video. I think I said in our last video we were working on our greenhouse and that would be coming up soon. It's almost done, I promise. I think we have probably maybe another week worth of work to do on that. And then that video will be coming on here because we have made a greenhouse out of rejected lumber at Lowe's that we got really cheap and I'm so excited to get it done because it's getting ready to frost here and I'm really excited to be able to get my plants, my uh, house plants and things that I like, like my ferns and things like that in that greenhouse. It's actually a cold frame, but if I said cold frame, a lot of people wouldn't know what I was talking about. So we call it a greenhouse also. But that's coming up and we also are going to have a special video. Uh, we are going to be going antiquing again and I want to show you our thrift haul and our antique haul. That will be happening probably next week as well. We go on that trip the 13th and 14th of November and that will be available to you here as well. Thanks guys for being here and I look forward to talking to all of you, all of you and I'm so grateful that you're part of my channel. Thank you so much for being here and Thanks to my special friend, you know who you are. I love you guys. Bye. See ya.